Kashipu Tanu bring on Keshava Drita Narahari Rupa Jai Jagadish Hare Jai Jagadish Hare Jai Jagadish Hare Tabakara Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam K. Samaveda Gora Bhakta Vrinda K. Gor Premanandi. Our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to Shishi Guru and Goranga. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya China Shinga, Sri Nashinga. How's it going? Jai 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 Nashinga. Ugram Biram Mahavishnu. Jalantam Sarvato Mukam. Nishingam Bishanam Badram. Mrityum Rityum Namamiham. Shri Nishinga Jai Nishinga Jai Jai Shri Nishinga Pralada Desha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Bringha So this is a prayer, Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, Chapter 18, Text 11, spoken by Pralada Maharaj. He is 
one of those empowered devotees that can be in more than one place at the same time. Be kind of nice, wouldn't it? A lot of times I have that desire. So he's in Hari Varsha, worshiping Lord Nishingadev. He's also in Sutala, uh, the planet where Bali Maharaj and uh, Lord Vamadev are. And uh, he's always remembering and glorifying the Lord. So this is a wonderful prayer that I thought was apropos for, for us today. If you can please repeat. Okay. Yet Sangalabdam Nijavir Yavai Bavam Sangalabdam Nijavir Yavai Bavam Tirtam Mahus Parshishatam Himanasaham Harantyo Ajonta Shuti Bir Gatonga Jam Kovaina Seve Tamukunda Vikramam Yet Sangalabdam Nijavir Yavivavam Tirtam Mahusam Sprishatam Himanasam Aratya Ajanta Shuti Bir Gatonga Jam Kovaina Seve Tamakunda Vikramam Yet Sangalab Dum Nidibir Tir Tum who sums Prishitam Himanasam Tir Tum who sums Prishitam Himanasam Kovaina Seve Tamakunda Vikramam Yet Sangalab Dum Nidjibavam Tir Tum who spurshitam him on a sum Erantia Junta Shutibir Gajontum Vinus Evetum Kun Yet Sangalab Dum Nidjibir Yavavavam Tir tam mahu sam svishi tam himana sam. Arantya janta shuti bir gajam gajam. Vaina se veta. Yet sangalab dam nijan vir yavayavavam. Tir tam who sums wish it tam himanasam. Aratya janta shuti beer get on the jam. Kovaina se ve kamakunda vikramam. Yet of whom the devotees sangalabdham achieve by the association. Nijavirya Bhavavam, whose influence is uncommon. Tirtam, holy places like the Ganges. Muhu, repeatedly. Samsprishyata, of those touching. He, certainly. Manasam, the dirty things in the mind. Harati vanquishes. Aja, the Supreme Unborn One. Antaha, in the core of the heart. Shutibi, by the ears. Gataha, entered. Angajam, dirty things or infections of the body. Kaha, who? Vai, indeed. Na, Na, not. Na. Sevata, Sevata would serve. Would serve. Mukunda Vikramam, Vikramam, the glorious activities of Mukunda, the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, <laughs> and his devotees. <laughs> okay. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. 
by associating with persons for whom the Supreme Personality of Godhead Mukunda is the all in all, one can hear of his powerful activities and soon come to understand them. The activities of Mukunda are so potent that simply by hearing of them, one immediately associates with the Supreme Lord. For a person who constantly and very eagerly hears narrations of the Lord's powerful activities, the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead in the form of sound vibrations, enters within his heart and cleanses it of all contamination. On the other hand, although bathing in the Ganges diminishes bodily contaminations and infections, this process and the process of visiting holy places can cleanse the heart only after a long time. Therefore, who is the sane man who will not associate with devotees to quickly perfect his life? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Bathing in the Ganges can certainly cure one of many infectious diseases. But it cannot cleanse one's materially attached mind, which creates all kinds of contaminations in material existence. However, one who directly associates with the Supreme Lord by hearing of his activities cleanses the dirt from his mind and very soon comes to Krishna consciousness. Sutta Goswami confirms this in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17. Shinvatam Swa Kata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Rajantyastohi Badrani Vidonati Suritsatam. The Supreme Lord within everyone's heart becomes very pleased when a person hears narrations of his activities and he personally cleanses the dirt from the mind of the listener. Riddhi Anta Stohi Badrani Vinoti. He washes, he washes all dirt from the mind. Material existence is caused by dirty things within the mind. If one can cleanse his mind, he immediately comes to his original position of Krishna consciousness, and thus his life becomes successful. Therefore, all the great saints in the devotional line very strongly recommend the process of hearing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced the congregational chanting of Hare Krishna mantra to give everyone a chance to hear Krishna's name. For simply by hearing, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, one becomes purified, Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. Therefore, our Krishna consciousness movement is chiefly engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra all over the world. Here's a mission statement. Therefore, our Krishna consciousness movement is chiefly engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra all over the world. After one's mind becomes cleansed by chanting Hare Krishna, one gradually comes to the platform of Krishna consciousness and then reads books like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and the Nectar Devotion. In this way, one becomes more and more purified of material contamination. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Nasta Prayusha Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki. By regularly hearing the Bhagavatam and rendering service unto the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is practically destroyed, and loving service unto the glorious Lord who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. In this way, simply by hearing of the powerful activities of the Lord, the devotee's heart becomes almost completely cleansed of material contamination, and thus his original position as an eternal servant who is part and parcel of the Lord becomes manifest. When the devotee engages in devotional service, the passionate and ignorant modes of material nature are gradually vanquished. And then he acts only in the mode of goodness. At that time, he becomes happy and gradually advances in Krishna consciousness. All the great acharyas strongly recommend that people be given a chance to hear about the Supreme Lord. Then success is assured. The more we cleanse the dirt of material attachment from our hearts, 
the more we'll be attracted by Krishna's name, form, qualities, paraphernalia, and activities. This is the sum and substance of the Krishna consciousness movement. What's the sum and substance of the Krishna consciousness movement? You can put it in your own words. Ah. Oh. That's a wonderful answer. To be attracted by the wonderful form, qualities, activities, associates, and pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There's a purport, and I believe it's in this Prahlad uh, Leela, where Srila Prabhupada uses the word attracted 21 times. Our business, everything about Krishna consciousness, everything in Krishna consciousness movement is to help us and others become attracted to Krishna. Now when you're attracted to Krishna, it's not a chore to stay awake in class. It's not a chore to stay awake and chanting Hare Krishna. It's not a chore to attentively listen to somebody who's sharing with us their thoughts, what's important, their association. Or I could use any other unlimited examples in Krishna consciousness. It's just like where is Damodar Kumar? Can you hear me, Damodar? Thank you. All glories to the cooks. Now, Damodar Kumar Prabhu the other day said, I could eat burritos every day. Pick whatever food you like. When you have an attachment to some particular food, then no one has to like put a gun to your head and say, come on, you're going to eat this every day. It's there. You want it. And according to the empowerment of the tongue and belly, you'll eat as much as you can until fully satisfied, sometimes beyond that point. So in Krishna consciousness, we don't ever come to the point where we're fully satisfied. It just gets deeper, sweeter, and more wonderful. We get glimpses of it every once in a while. And I'm going to say one prayer and then continue on from that particular point. I said prayers previously. I, I, I hope that at least, I hope some of you, Daily take it upon yourselves to pray to Srila Prabhupada, to your spiritual master, that the speaker can speak the message. They can be empowered to be a transparent medium for the message to come through. And that you also pray for yourself if you're sitting in the audience. Please let me hear. Let all the Prabhus hear so that we can become inspired by the message. Mukam Kuroti Pachalam Pungam Langai Tegrim Yatkipatamahan Vande Shri Gurum Dinatarnam Om Parmana Nanda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishvaram So sometimes we get glimpses of this inspiration. It's not easy to be inspired every day, to have an epiphany every day. The pure Vaishnavas, they do. Pilat Maharaj, he certainly does. And now we heard some disparaging words about the Ganga. She's nice, but you know, she'll cure your, your infections and this, that. We're not taking into account Mother Ganga at, at Mayapur. Mother Ganga is liquid gora praying. We're not taking into account when Prabhupada disparages the holy Tirthas. It's nice, go visit, but it takes a long time. We're not, not, we're not talking about Mayapur in that sense. Lord Chaitanya very quickly gives Goranga Prem, Krishna Prem, to anybody who wants it. By diving deep, daily, regularly, always in the ocean of the nectar of Lord Chaitanya and his associates, names, qualities, forms, pastimes, etc., one comes up on the shore of Radha and Krishna's pastimes. The nectar is there to be had. So we are meant to engage in inspirational sadhana, inspired sadhana. The challenge is we fall victim to routine. 
or ritual. Actually, everything we do can be minimized or mundaneized to mere ritual. I heard a quote not too long ago. We have to become free of the idolization of our normalcy. Stop and think about that statement. Big words, and I'll break it down in a second. But we have to become free of the idolization of the normalcy of our lives. In other words, we're doing the same old thing every day. I sit in exactly the same place every day, as well as every one of you. We're creatures of habit because the soul wants steadiness. The soul wants shelter. It's unchanging. That's a quality of the soul. And so we, we gravitate for that in our lives, as, does, as do most people in this world. But there is the danger that the internalization of Krishna consciousness is not taking place. There's nothing ritual or uh, when properly done, there's nothing stagnant about our sadhana. It's meant to be ardently heard in the holy names of Krishna, ardently heard while we're uh, sitting in Srimad Bhagavatam. Where did it go? Once again, ardent means it's characterized by warmth of emotion, desire, passion, or displaying and, and characterized, uh, characterized by strong enthusiasm or devotion. Internally, how do you do that? If we're not laying open our heart to our spiritual master before we begin to chant and while chanting, please help me serve you. Please accept my life as yours. If we're not internally in that kind of mood, then it just becomes the alphabet and every day we'll fall asleep. It happens. Some of us, every day, in a regular fashion, same time, we fall asleep in Joppa or fall asleep in class. What's wrong with that? Prahlad Maharaj twice says, I'm very much afraid of material existence. I was born in a demoniac family. Please, don't tempt me. Keep me away from material sense gratification. I don't want it, nor do we want it. But the mind, what was the um, synonyms in this particular verse? The mind, let's see, the dirty things in the mind, manasam. And in one of the verses in the seventh canto, Prahlad's prayers, it says the chief duty of the mind is to keep us within the material world. If we do not open ourselves up and let our associates know, Prabhu, would you help me when you see I need help? My life is meant for instruction. My life is meant for correction. That's the mood of a Vaishnava. We're the servants. When Prahlad Maharaj was offered material benedictions, he said, I've seen mystic power. I've seen the opulence of this world. I've seen longevity of life. I've seen all the sense gratification that could be enjoyed had by my father. And time steals it, destroys it. It's not the shelter we're looking for. But we forget these things. When we say, quickly achieve Krishna Prem, that's the fifth goal of life. That's what Prahlad Maharaj possesses. That's what, by following his example, you want to hear the blessing for hearing these pastimes? Time is so short, but the blessing of these pastimes, Lord Nishingade says, anyone who hears these activities of yours and mine, he'll become completely purified of all contamination, just like in this purport. He become pure. He said, if anyone will follow the example that you set, Prahlad Maharaj, then he too will become a pure devotee of mine. These are the blessings right there for the taking. They're right there in front of us. But do we stay focused on the goal? Or do we get, you know, comfortable in the normalcy of our sadhana and our life, our routines. Now, it's the best kind of life you can get, no question. But why would we risk coming again? 
If the, you know, this is comfortable. In Krishna consciousness, the comfort zone is not meant to be comfortable. When Prahlad Maharaj is feeling his ecstasy, he simultaneously is feeling the pain of these fools and rascals are wasting their valuable human life. They have no idea. When Prabhupada spoke on this Leela on the appearance day in the Shinga day, he hammered on this Nateva too, Swarta Gatami Vishnu. They have no idea. And so they repeatedly embrace sense gratification. They repeatedly chew the chewed. And what's the results? Repeated birth and death in this world. That bothers, that pains the pure devotees of the Lord. That's the example of Prahlad Maharaj. You're going to a park or something after class or during breakfast or something like that? Is that the plan? That's what Damodar Kumar Prabhu said. What you going to do there? Go for a walk. Need the exercise? Need the association? What's the motive? Sh share with me. What, how, how are we pleasing the Shingadev? What are you doing to serve the Shingadev in that walk? The idea was uh, so the Brahmacharis would associate more from one time together. Now, may I make a suggestion? I'm going to go hang out with Yudi. We're going to stir the nectar. We're going to be chanting a lot of prayers. We're going to be hearing and talking about Lord Nishingadev. It doesn't matter where you do it. In fact, the externals of Krishna consciousness, it's really, it's it, like Prahlad. I'm not going to go through one of those, those verses. I read two, if not three verses. That, the Lord's not pleased by any external. Twelve qualities of a Brahmin, etc. That doesn't grab his attention. Bhakti, devotion, the, even just the desire to serve his servant, that catches his attention. So it doesn't matter if we're chanting loudly, we're chanting softly, or we're hearing here and talking about Nishingadev there. That's, that's the externals. But if you have that ardent desire, like this is as Dravida has said twice today, Maha Maha Mahotsava Ki Jai. It's not a Maha 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 Mahotsava if you're not in the mood. It is, but it isn't for you if you're not in the mood. How many devotees did a little reading about Prahlad and Nishingadev yesterday? Anybody? How do you get in the mood for Mongol Arctic hit the beach running that you're fired up? It's the Nishinga Day, it's the appearance day, birthday of Lord Nishinga Day. How do you get fired up if you haven't even cracked a book? Reason why I, puck, puck, uh, I picked this purport. Prophet says, when the dirt begins to be cleansed by our chanting Hare Krishna, everybody's here chanting Hare Krishna's. Most everybody here is chanting 16 rounds. One of my Prabhus is needing help a few days of the week to accomplish that, and I hope that'll be remedied. But when you become purified and chanting Hare Krishna, what do you start doing? You start going for the nectar of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, nectar devotion. This is not an information, uh, what do they call that, uh, scavenger hunt. I'm not here just, I could tell you a lot of things you probably haven't even ever heard. I know for Glenn and uh, uh, Bhakti Jamal, that's a fact. Probably for a handful of you. But it's not about information. We're not simply gathering facts, slokas, figures, leelas. We're meant for transformation. That's another one of those little one-liners. This isn't about gathering information, it's about transformation cleansing the heart where the heart becomes excited about becoming Krishna conscious if you want to go back home to Godhead you have to actually realize connect the dots you want to die today is a fantastic day to die today is a wonderful day to give up the body and go back to the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord by the mercy of the spiritual master in his company and in the company of all his other sons and daughters. Every day is. But it, it, it's happening all the time, but it's just like, like Mother Parvati. She's alumni. You knew her, right? Ramapati, Dravida Prabhu knew her. Three or four days ago, she left this world. Who knows if there's somebody else, who, if, if, if I can still say she's the most recent. Who knows? It's like time isn't slowing down for anybody, but the urgency, the more you become purified, you get, you, 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 it's like you can't wait to wake up. 
and engage in the process of Krishna consciousness. And if you've caught that fervor, which has been given to you by your spiritual master, how? By chanting and by hearing the scripture. If you're not hearing and reading daily the scripture, then how can I be surprised? How can you be surprised? You're not hitting your epiphanies in a, fa in a regular fashion. How's it happen? This is not a mechanical process. You don't just put the quarter in the machine and your, and your gumball comes out. You don't just chant 16 rounds and get Krishna praying or even empowered to share where you actually help be an instrument for transformation of others. It doesn't happen automatically. When Srila Prabhupada says, one does not have to separately endeavor for the spiritual qualities of Krishna consciousness, that's for somebody on the platform of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada in this purport says, the, gradually the lower modes, ignorance and passion, they diminish and the mode of goodness uh, you know, manifest. From there, one makes gradual process. It's easier in, in mode of goodness, but we can't become comfortably numb in the mode of goodness. We have to be striving for breaking through the glass ceilings that we, our mind imposes upon ourselves. Only through association are we able to do that. On our own, we're limited and we're very faulty. We're conditioned. And that's to our disadvantage. It's only by the help of others, our prabhus, that we can see that for what it is. And that's what these pastimes are about. It's the living Bhagavatam. Prahlad Maharaj is alive and well. You pray to him, he's going to hear you. That's the inconceivable mercy of Krishna consciousness. The spiritual master is never unmanifest for one who takes advantage of, of him. How do you take advantage? You pray, please come give me shelter. Please guide me. Please protect me. And by his mercy, the Lord is right there. What is it? Guru Krishna Prashade Bhai, Pai, Bhakti Lata Bij. When I told, you know, we talked to Aja this morning for Mongol Arctic, today's the birthday of Lord Nishinga Day. And he knew I was excited. I've been reading all week. I basically read the seventh canto. So it, it, I did that because this is a huge day for Godi of Vaishnavs. This is a day you pray to Nishinga Day. Now you can pray to him for whatever you want. Prabhupada originally gave it to us when he was, you know, his health had failed. And could you please pray to Krishna via Nishingadev to protect me? I don't want to go yet. I have a lot of service to render to my spiritual master. And he gave us the prayers. Lord Chaitanya chanted the Namaste Narasinghaya prayers. And Jayadev Goswami gave us the uh, Namaste Narasimha prayers. Tava, thank you. Tavakara Kamala prayer from the Das Avatar Stotram. So we can pray. Life is fearful. Life is full of anxiety. Why? Because we think we're the body. It still nags us. We haven't broken through. We intellectualize, but when push comes to shove, that's when, uh, you know, one gets to see to what degree are you internalizing and having inspirational sadhana, super sadhana. So when you're faced with death, Prabhupada, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you're ready because you're readying yourself every day, not mechanically, not sleepwalking. I tell you, death is not going to be a cakewalk for most of us. For most of us, it becomes a very painful situation. Now, you want to talk about painful situations. Prahlad Maharaj went through them all. Time is dictating that I have to really jump around. I'd love to have taken it step by step. But let's see, where is the description? of the ways in which he was tortured. Now, I could off the top of my head say a number of them, but the one that came to my mind was, I've told you I saw a young boy about six years old fall into a boiling giant pot of milk. I told you that one time, right? Yeah, it was one of the most surreal, horrific experiences of my life. But to speak for him. Now, he didn't come through it like Prahlad Maharaj. 75% of the skin of his body was scalded off. It was a miracle that he lived through it. I'll tell you what he did do when that experience happened. He uh, went into shock. 
chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, the whole way to the hospital. If that's what Krishna needs to do to get us to that point, he has no problem doing it. This body, this mind is not us, it's an illusion. You want to know the essence of the teachings of Prahlad to his classmates? That's it. Atma Tattva. You're not the body. Komara Acharya Pragyo. From the very beginning of life, listen attentively to Divya Gan from the pure Vaishnav. We're not the body. We're not the mind. We're none of these temporary designations. Sarvapati Vinir Muktam. Tat Paratoyana Nirmalam. If we're not becoming free of them, then what's going on? We're not properly embracing and following. Either externally there needs to be some changes or certainly internally in terms of desire. Amp it up. And these are the days we get to do that. The mercy is there. The mercy is there. Pallad Maharaj set the tone. He'll listen to our pleas for help. He wants to empower us. Nishingadev wants to bring us back to his service. But we don't have the desire. Not sufficiently, not fully. At least I can be speaking for myself. So, 7543. Yeah, thank you. You're so wonderful. 7543. Mm, Hare Krishna. Aranyakashipu, he tried stabbing him. Kill him! He's a servant of my enemy. Now, how can you fault Aranyakashipu? You kill my brother, you kill my wife, you kill my son. You're my enemy. Gut reaction. I'm going for you. That's what happened to Aranyakashipu. My brother is killed by Vishnu, and you're surrendering and serving him? You're glorifying him? He was given a couple of chances. First time he comes, you know, oh, what was it? Uh, you know, Dad, you know, you ought to give up your sense gratification, go to Vrindavan, become a devotee. You know, that shocked him. Told his teachers, you, you know, take care of this kid. Comes back again, and, and what's he tells him? He tells him something like, yeah, uh, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu. I'm supposed to glorify the man, the, 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 the Vishnu who killed my brother? And then he turns to teachers. What kind of rascals are you? You're teaching my son this. He's ready to kill them. It's not us. I don't know where he gets it. Devotees, demigods, they're not sneaking in. There's no disguise. He, it, it just comes from him. Where do you get it? Vlad goes, oh, you don't have to worry, Dad. When one is attached, thoroughly attached to hearth and home, wife and children, possessions, and just thinking life's pleasure is in chewing the chewed, you're not going to become Krishna conscious. You won't understand this transcendental knowledge, not by your own speculation, not by you know, someone else trying to help you, and not by uh, you know, a combination of the two. Hearing, sitting in lectures. It's not going to happen. Don't worry, Dad. Unless you smear the dust of the lotus feet on, uh, all over your body, Krishna consciousness will never manifest in your life. And of course, by that, we mean absorbing ourselves in the instructions of the spiritual master, in these pastimes that are shared with us. They don't awesome. What's that word? To awesomeate? To, they don't... Uh, no, that's shaking. Absorb. Osmosa was the word I was looking for. Thank you, Maharaj. It doesn't happen. Awesome. Os but it doesn't just, you know, it's not a magic act here. It's a process. You have to ardently hear, attentively hear. And when you hear it, it's really good either to write it down or to repeat it as soon as you can because then the memory takes place. 
in memory, then you start realizing, yeah, I want to apply this in my life. It starts sinking in. The transformation of the heart takes place. And that's what Prahlad Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada, all the previous acharyas on behalf of the Lord are desirous of us, for us to get it and to live it. We practice things. By practice, you develop habits. Every day, as I was saying, we have a schedule. Maharaj, you missed it, but you sit in the same place, I sit in this place. We all do the same thing every day. But we've got a glass ceiling that we're not breaking through for the real empowerment of transforming from practice habit to ver developing character. So if we hobble ourselves by inattentive hearing or inattentive chanting, etc., our spaced out services, then we get the result. The lack of development of the purity of character doesn't manifest. Not as quickly as it should or could. So Prahlad Maharaj was tested in innumerable ways. I was going to read that. They tried stabbing him with, uh, with spears. Didn't work. Tried trampling him by the elephants. They uh, threw him in a pit of, uh, you know, giant venomous serpents. Now, I'd forgotten what each one of the incidents were, but he was always remembering the Lord. We know that. But in the Nishinga Purana, it talks about like when he was thrown in the snakes, you know what he thought of? Wow, this is like the bed of my, of my father. He lies on an antasatia. Ah, this is awesome. Or uh, hurling him from the top of a mountain. They tried all their uh, illusory tricks. They gave him poison in his food. Of course, he offered it. No problem. Starving him, exposing him to severe cold. Winds, fire. Now, here's one that I learned just recently, and I imagine you may not have heard it, and it's just pure nectar, but it's another example. Aranyakashipu saw, man, this isn't working. I got to up my game. I want to kill this kid, this enemy. He's like, a, he's like a, a diseased limb. It should be amputated. Doesn't matter, he's my son, he's my enemy. So he went to Lord Shiva. Now, he got all the boons from Lord Brahma, so he upped his game. He went to Lord Shiva and prayed, prayed. Shiva's easily pleased. What do you want? I want the uh, possession of the destructive fire that you have and use at the end of the annihilation of the universe. To Tustu, he got it. Now I can burn this kid. He had a sister. Forget her name. But what he did, put him in a place on a chair. His sister had a boon. She couldn't be destroyed by fire. And she, she so Haranya Kajipu goes, okay, you hold him. No problem. And she's, she's with the plan. She holds him in the chair, and then he invokes the destructive universal fire to burn him. Finally, I'm going to be done with this kid. It burned for a month. And when the month was over, all that remained were the ashes of his sister and little Perlod, internally remembering the Lord. Fire, fire is the tongue. He was, he was unscathed. He didn't, have, he, didn't have a, he didn't have a... The universal fire was evidently a bit more than her capacity to handle. And because she was part and parcel of offending the pure Vaishnava, Krishna doesn't care what kind of boons you have. You're going down. So she died, and Prahlad Maharaj was, 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 was sitting there, happy. Fire is the tongue of my father. Yagya, they'll have a yagya tonight. He eats through fire. He sees Krishna everywhere. And this verse that we chanted was Mukunda, Mukunda, Mukunda. He's a Krishna Bhakta. Krishna, Nishinga is Krishna, manifesting, but he's so angry and he manifests in a form to fulfill the desire the promises of his devotee this form of the lord is so merciful to his devotees and as i was saying today it's like in south india in tirupati they have one gate where you can go for darshan it's called the vaikuntha gate in that particular kadashi anyone who will go through that gate on a particular kadashi Guaranteed, back to Godhead. 
on this day, guaranteed, the floodgates of mercy are open. If you looked at any of the pictures of Lord Nishingadev in Mayapur when it, during Chandan Yatra, where he's completely covered with Chandan, you'll see his smile ear to ear. He is so happy helping the devotees. We said Prabhupada started our chanting of Nishinga's prayer for uh, deliverance, help him in his health. Please don't take our spiritual master yet to protect the movement. Whenever one is in danger, one should remember Nishinga Day. One is encouraged. He will easily remove the obstacles, protect us. Uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he prays wonderful prayers to Lord Nishinga Day. I wanted to read these. These give us an idea how we can approach the Lord. He says, revealing his heart. Like I said, before chanting Japa, during Japa, we should be laying our heart bare to Srila Prabhupada, to Lord Chaitanya, in the holy names, asking for their mercy, asking to serve them properly. He opens his heart to the Lord, and he says, in my heart reside duplicity, insincerity, the desire for fame, and the six enemies beginning with lust, lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness, etc., Therefore, I pray at the feet of Lord Nishingadev to purify my heart and give me the desire to serve Krishna. Weeping, I will beg at the lotus feet of Nishinga that I may worship Radha and Krishna in Navadweep, free from all obstacles. When will that Lord Hari who strikes fear and fear personified be pleased and bestow his mercy on me? Although this form of the Lord is terrible for the evil, He's exceedingly auspicious for the devotees, headed by Prahlad. When will he become pleased to mercifully speak to me, a worthless fool, and remove my fears? This is his meditation on the boon he asked for and that Lord Nishingadev gives. Dear child, stay happily in Goradam. Worship Radhan Krishna and develop attraction for the holy name. By the mercy of my devotees, Notice he didn't say, by my mercy. Through the mercy of my devotees, all obstacles are transcended. With a purified heart, just worship Radha and Krishna, the abodes of sweet nectar. After speaking in this way, when will that Lord joyfully place his feet upon my head? At that moment, by Lord Nishinga's mercy, I will exhibit symptoms of ecstatic love for Radha and Krishna and will roll on the ground by the door of Lord Nishinga Dave's temple. This is a good desire. This is a nice prayer. When tempted with the sense gratification, like I said earlier, Prahlad Maharaj wouldn't have it. He said, my Lord, why would you tempt me? I'm born in a demon family. Don't. I simply want that all material desires be free from the core of my heart. He said, you're my master, and I'm your servant. This is our relationship eternally. I don't serve you for any remuneration. And a master is not a proper master if he unduly rewards the servant just to keep the prestigious position of being the master. If we serve the Lord, as Prahlad Maharaj says, to get something in return, that's not service, that's business. And he has no desire to be a businessman with Lord Krishna. He simply wants to be his servant. And he prays, will you please allow me to stay in the association and shelter of the Vaishnav? Because of my material desires, I was falling into a blind well full of poisonous snakes, which were my material desires manifesting. Unlimited material desires. But my spiritual master, he saved me. He accepted me as a disciple. And he's instructed me in the science of how to serve you. So please, just give me the opportunity to remain at his service, at his feet, and serve him. That's what he prays for. Service of the Vaishnavas. Sridhar Maharaj, our God brother, before he was leaving this world, just a few days before, when you come to the end of this sojourn in this body you really everything's stripped away all the varnish all the shellac all the glitter all the superfluous crap of material existence is stripped away 
And he told one devotee, he said, you see all this? None of it has meaning except association and service of the devotees. If we've got that, then we take advantage of the all that we see around us. This society was created by Srila Prabhupada to give shelter and association of each other. But that association, like we read in this purport, the sum and substance of it is chanting Hare Krishna, hearing about the pastimes and getting it. When you have it, you become so excited, you got to share it with others. So that's when the mercy takes place. And that's what he pr teach to his, taught to his schoolmates. He said, please, give up this concept of friend and enemy. It's an illusion. You've got no friends or enemies in this world. The only enemy is the mind. And we've touched on that a few times. This mind. Only business is to keep us in this material world. That is our enemy. And it's internal and dug deep in. Only by the mercy of Krishna. So he says, you know, give up the concept of friend and enemy in this world. Become free of the dualities. Chasing after the happiness and having to fall into the pit of the unhappiness that comes side by side with it. Become fixed in your service of the Lord and manifest mercy for other living entities. I just heard a pastime of Prabhupada. How are you, you know, mosquitoes disturbing Prabhupada in the night when translating? I sorry, I had the service of trying to shush him out. And there was one particular one time when he was doing that, uh, Prabhupada got in the big tent like mosquito net with him, just started translating. And uh, he, there was one pesky mosquito that just, God, he was, he, he, he just, could, he couldn't catch him, couldn't get him out. So finally, he just took his charter and picked him up, took, threw him out on the floor outside. A little bit later, just not that long, but a little bit later, that little mosquito, and he flew away. And Prabhupada said, Jai! He was happy that the mosquito wasn't killed. He didn't want him to disturb his service, but he was happy the mosquito wasn't killed. Unbelievable. This is mercy. When you have love for Krishna, you have love for all of Krishna's family, all life forms. So anyway, he, he, that was, that's the teaching. Lord Chaitanya simplifies it. Develop a, cha a, a taste for chanting, hearing, kirtan, japa, shastra, and serve the devotees. Through service of the devotees, it's the root of bhakti. And share it with others. That's the essence, the sum and substance of the Krishna conscious movement. Everything's meant to bring us to that point. And Prahlad Maharaj, he personifies that perfectly. Now, that place, do you know where, how, why Prahlad Maharaj encouraged, now, an obvious reason, you know, everyone. He, first thing, instruction he gave his father was, Give up sense gratification. Go to Vrindavan and take shelter of Krishna. Now, I heard another interesting fact. Nice bit of nectar. It connects to why Prahlad Maharaj, of course, he's a devotee of Krishna. Krishna means Vrindavan. But this also is a part of it. You know where Narada Muni's ashram was when his, his uh, mother was kidnapped by Indra and they were going to kill the unborn child within the womb. Not, they wouldn't kill him. They wouldn't abort him. They'd wait till he was born. And then they would kill the demon. Now when Narada came, it's another one of the promises that the Lord had to fulfill. He said, hold on. Don't try to kill him. This is a pure Vaishnava. And you wouldn't be able to kill him even if you tried. And she was still worried in the ashram. And he said, don't worry. Your child is safe. He'll be harmed by no one. Another one of the promises, Krishna, when he does anything, he can accomplish so many things in one move. So he was, by killing Rani Kashipu, he fulfilled so many promises. Of Narada Muni, of Lord Brahma, of Prahlad Maharaj, of Arjuna, Kontei Pratijani Hina, Me Bhakti Pradashati, etc. So wonderful.
seamlessly, effortlessly did it. Uh, anyway, you know where the ashram of Narada Muni was that he took the, the uh, mother to? It was in Vrindavan. Yeah. And it's, they, they have a Prahlad Kund there. That, uh, you know. Anyway, so that was cool. It ties in. He'd been in Vrindavan. That's where his bija, Krish, Bhakti bija, was given by uh, Narada Muni. And he told his dad, that's where you should go. Oh, best of the Asuras. He was speaking from personal experience and realization. Everything about him is, is attractive. Just simply seeing him perform devotional service, people would become Krishna conscious. He was so absorbed. His qualities are enumerated in all great assemblies whenever devotional service and the qualities of devotional service are described. In his own humility, he told his spiritual master later on when Narda was searching out the best recipient of the Lord because Prahlad is one of the three persons in the Bhagavatam described as the best devotee. Shiva, Prahlad, and Govardhan, Giraj Maharaj. So he, he, he is described by the Lord personally as one of the best devotees. And what was the end of that sentence? That uh, simply seeing him, one would become Krishna conscious. By following his example, we would become Krishna conscious. Wherever devotees are glorified, devotional qualities, he is there. And he told his spiritual master, this was the thought, when Narada Muni was glorifying him, looking for the best devotee, he said, what are you talking about? When the Lord is merciful to one, he takes everything away. You know what he gave me? He gave me a kingdom to rule, a kingdom of demons. Is this a sign of his mercy? He was given the benediction that you'll, you'll rule for the duration of, the, of Manu, 71 times the four cycles, 4,320,000 years. Long time. That was his humility. Prahlad, like every pure Vaishnav, is per humility personified. When his teachers are teaching the crap, laying it in his ears, pouring it in his ears, he humbly sat there listening. But when they went to take lunch, that's when he said, hey, come on over. Started glorifying devotional service. So, <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Different hours, how Prabhupada, very, very cute. So anyway, so much. We'll hear more nectar tonight, but so much. But don't. My, an admis, admonishment that I've given to you, and I'll repeat it. On these days, don't come in cold feet. You know, read something before the day to get you in the mood so that when the day's beginning at Mong Arctic, you're ready to be praying to them for their mercy. You're excited about the day. Nishingadev appeared. I didn't even touch his appearance. Oh, man, the description of the Lord, his shrill laughter. I've never in the microphone, you know, tried to imitate. When he let Haranyakashipu go and Haranyakashipu, like an idiot, thought, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill him. You know, Nishingaji, loud, shrill laughter, shrill. Striking terror into the heart of the demon. Now, Nishingadeva is so wonderful. Extremely fearsome to the demons and extremely affectionate to us. One last thing, this is a wonderful note. No one, not Brahma, not Shiva, not even Lakshmi, got the blessing of Nishingadeva's lotus hand upon his head. This is a clincher. You are one of the best devotees, so dear to the Lord. You see this uh, picture of Nishingadeva embracing Prahlad? In the Hari Bhakti Siddhodhai, it explains that when he pay, pay, paid his obeisances, be, saying prayers, we know from Bhagavatam, the Lord lifted him up and put his hand on his head, blessing him. Something that no one else had gotten. It also explains that he embraced him, just like this picture. And that he sat down on the ground, and he placed Prahlad on his lap. And like a lioness, he began licking Prahlad's entire body. Lord Nishingade became filled with the parental bhav, the affection for his devotee. My dear, 
dear loving devotee. No one else gets this. No one else has gotten that. Not as it was exhibited. And the Lord wanted to show us that it doesn't matter if you're born in a family of demons. You can still, through devotional service, sincerity of purpose in devotional service, please the Lord. You can become attached to the Lord. You can conquer the Lord. God, I wish I could get into the conquered pastime, but we won't get into that. So I think I'll end there. I think they're going to be coming out to blow the conch shell. Prabhu's, thank you for your association, for your attention, Maharaj. Why don't you come until they blow the conch shell? Well, there's one pastime in the Briya Bhagavatam Rita where Prahlad Maharaj went off to Naimishranya Forest. And he saw this sannyasi with a bow and arrow. And he thought, well, this is bogus. This guy's not doing his duty. Sannyasi renounces. He said, a king is meant to keep everybody in their duties. No adharma in my kingdom. And so uh, he challenged him. He said, I'm going to defeat you. You know, this is bogus, obviously. He fought for days and days and days, and he couldn't fe- defeat him. And every night, of course, they stopped the battle. So in the morning, Prahlad would worship his deity. And after several days of fighting, he had offered the garland to his deity. And then when he got up to fight uh, this bogus sannyasi saw the garland that he had offered the Lord. And then it, it, he realized, oh my gosh, this is my Lord. <laughs> he went and fell down at his feet and, uh, you know, prayed to him, glorified him, pleased him. And uh, he said, my Lord, what am I going to do now? As a Shatri, I made my pledge that, uh, you know, I would defeat you. And uh, the Lord said to Prahlad, what are you talking about? We're always defeated by you. So when Narada Muni heard that, he took it in the plural sense that every devotee can conquer the Lord. And he said, conquered by us. He was so excited. That's what Prahlad Maharaj and our spiritual masters are offering to us. The ability to capture the Lord by our loving service. Sri Prahlad Maharaj ki. Sri Nishingade Bhagavan ki. Shishi Gornitai K. Gor Primanandi.